welcome to my channel Tanisha Educational Hub and I'm Dr. Shwata Malani, your biology coach and here I am today to discuss about the past 10 years question paper from class 12 biology, you know, chapter 2, sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Now, before I proceed in discussing those questions, I will first like to answer some of the frequently asked questions, which you call as FAQs. Normally, the children ask me, let me address those questions first, one by one. The first question which I found children normally asking is, ma'am, how important is biology, you know, the board exam, not biology, you know, uh, exactly. How important is the board exam? Because we are here preparing for the medical entrance examination and there we need only 60 percentage of marks. So why is it, uh, you know, that we should study hard for the board exams or how important should the board exams be for us? So is it important? They really ask me and my answer is a yes. Why do I say yes? I have few points to convince you why you should take your board exams very seriously. One, your board exams are set from NCRT and your medical question papers are also set from NCRT. Now, trust me, guys, the level of the you know questions in your board exams are quite good. They are quite, uh, you know, and they are quite competitive. And if you are able to get a very high marks, uh, in your board exams that way that some way you know serves as an index that yes your preparation for medical exam is also going very right so i'll say that yes please uh, study is hard because you know board questions uh, there's a myth people think that the questions are very easy no the questions are really tricky at times and if you can address those questions with a perfection somewhere it means your preparation for the medical exam is also going good so that is my first point and second i accept that there is no, um, you know, the board exams don't have much weightage as per the eligibility is concerned, except that you need those 60 or 65 percent marks depending from the medical entrance examination. But there's a big but over here. And what's the big but? You never know. <clears throat> you never know uh, in due course of your career at any examination, there may be a tie and the tie breaker but, you know, the board exams may be considered as the marks for the tiebreaker. Two children competing for one seat, both of them getting the same marks, then how to resolve? Maybe, maybe then board exams may be given due weightage. And as you know, as on today, you know, the COVID virus, you know, uh, uh, you never know how the time turns. In the today's time of COVID virus, I'll tell you, for many of the students who are appearing on an online examination test for entrance into higher colleges, I'm talking about the commerce and the arts children, you'll not believe since it is very difficult uh, to conduct examination on an online basis and make it them cheating proof. So they are actually considering your even 10 board exam because the 12 board exams are yet not over, the marks have not come out. So they are considering your 10 board exams as one of the, you know, uh, <clears throat> eligibility criteria for selection into colleges. So you never know, you know, the board exams, particularly the 10th and the 12th, they may come as a rescue at any point of your career. So please, please, yes, do take them seriously and just make it a target. Try to score a 100 out of 100 score in biology. And trust me, if you go the way I tell you, I guide you, no one can stop you from getting that perfect 100 score, right? Second FAQ, which children often ask me, what is the advantage of practicing those past papers? What are the other advantages? You know, they ask me, okay, we understand that board exams are important then, but why should we practice the boarding past 10 years paper? Why should we practice that? We understood that NCRT is to be read well and board exams are to be taken seriously, but why, why at all should we study the past question papers? I'll tell you one. Firstly, it gives you the trend. What do I mean by trend? When you pass, you know, practice past year's question papers, you actually come to know which questions are more important, which are less important. And, and, you know, at times you also come up with some surprising facts like some topics you thought that, oh, they are not important and you just get flabbergasted. Oh my God, you know, this could have come as a five mark question. I had never guessed it. Maybe you don't prefer to revise it in your, uh, you know, last moment. So definitely last past question papers, they help you analyze which topics are important, which are not important and how to go about it. Second, you know, uh, CBSE, once the questions exams are over, the CBSE releases the answer scheme as to how the answers have to be written. So, you know, I'm going to give you the original CBSE answer scheme as I discuss the questions and that will help you understand 
what are the keywords you must write in order to get that perfect marks that means in short how to write your answers you exactly come to know about it the moment you practice you go through the cbsc marking scheme third you know some questions are repeated so if you practice 10 years question paper, you, you never know that 30% of the question paper may, may be a repeat and that way you get very easily, you get some of the questions which you have actually learned very well and that makes your examination process very easy. And last and most important, practicing last few years, trust me, past question papers will make you more confident and the more confident you enter into the examination hall, trust me, your probability of getting better marks out of the same preparation will be enhanced many folds. I'll talk here about an effect called as fluency effect. I often talk about it with my students on this effect called as fluency effect. You know what is this fluency effect? People normally say that we value normally those things more which we are able to see in the process. That means, you know, at times we just speculate, Patani, what we are studying, will it come in the exam or not? Am I in the right direction or not? But the moment you go through the past question papers that come as a reference point, okay, I studied this much. These are the questions which came and if I write like this, I'm going to get that perfect marks. So that's called the fluency effect. That means when you see something happening, you get more convinced. And when you see the past question papers and we are able to solve it, as per the CBSE standard, definitely your confidence will boost up and that will help you score more marks, right? So these are some of my tips as to how, why you should go through the past question papers. And now that I've done with it without wasting much time, I'll directly, you know, go into the barge, into the chapter, and I'll start discussing the papers right from 2010 to 2020, because this year, as we know, the board exams have already been conducted. So the time question papers, here I am to discuss with you. So here we start with class 12, chapter 2, as I told you, sexual reproduction in flowering plants, right? So uh, class 12, board papers, we are going to practice right from 2010 to 2020. And before I introduce myself into, you know, we introduce ourselves into the chapter, let me tell you about a few things. One, you must know this has been, I have been telling in all my, you know, question paper videos that you must know what is the weightage of that chapter and that unit in the board exams. So, you know, the unit one, not unit one, the unit six, which is reproduction, it has a weightage of 14 marks. It includes four chapters, as you know. It includes four chapters. There's no uh, specification by CBSE uh, as to what is the weightage of the individual chapters, but overall the unit has a weightage of 14 marks, right? And I must tell you this, I'm telling this in all my videos of class 12, from this year onward, CBSE board has brought about a change in the question paper pattern. From this year on itself only, they have introduced question number one to five, that is overall five questions will be MCQ of one mark each. In this five questions, there will be two internal choices. Then question number six to 12, that is total seven number of questions will be short answer type. They will be of two marks weightage. There will be one, you know, of, uh, overall choice, internal choice in these seven questions. Question number 13 to 21, that is nine questions will be short answer type of three marks and question number 22 to 24 again three questions will be short answer types of three marks now this surprises us that why has cbsc bifurcated three marks question into two different categories one is section c and one is section d this is because these are the normal questions being asked from ncrt and these are certain understanding based questions you know they'll be asked to test your understanding and your power of comprehension right so overall we get nine plus three that comes to uh, 12 questions if i'm right questions of three marks where you have two internal uh, you know choices you get um, uh, choices in two questions and last three questions that is question number that will be section e question number 25 to 27 they will be long answer type questions which will be having five marks weightage and each question will have an alternative that is an or right that means in totality you have 27 questions being divided into five sections section a b c d and e i have this is how the question paper looks in the beginning please take out some time to go through these general instructions and then you will come to know what is the question pattern and how the questions are going to be framed 
this you can do it on your own just pause the video and try to go through them so now without wasting many much time let us move to 2011 and let's see what are the questions that were asked from this chapter now as we know we are uh, this is about the entire unit uh, i will just move my video a little bit over here from this unit as i told you 14 marks questions are asked out of which in 2011 in set one right five questions let me uh yeah five questions were asked from this chapter and as you can see here very clearly right as you can see here very clearly uh these were the five mark questions was asked from this chapter and the or i told you all five mark questions they have an alternative the or for this question was also asked from this chapter itself so let us look into the question the question asked was give reason why most zygote in angiosperm divide only after a certain amount of endosperm is formed and second uh, it was five you know one two three four five and each uh, question had one mark weightage then uh, the answer to this is why is it that most zygote in angiosperm divide only after a certain amount of endosperm is formed you know that in angiosperm first the endosperm formation occurs and once a little amount of endosperm is formed then only the zygote starts dividing into an embryo why the question is this is so that the zygote can obtain nourishment from the endosperm for developing embryo this zygote when it gets converted into embryo in order to get converted into embryo this zygote needs certain energy so first we form the endosperm so this endosperm can provide nourishment to the zygote and this nourishment will be utilized by the zygote to get converted into embryo the second question asked was groundnut seeds are ex albuminous and castor seeds are albuminous give reason why because the groundnut seed we are they uh, the, the here the endosperm is not there the endosperm is completely consumed whereas in castor seeds what happened by the time the seeds are formed some of the endosperm persists so they are so this is one mark question that had come now the come to the next question micropyle remains as a small pore in the seed coat of a seed when you look at a seed particularly a dicot seed i'm drawing one over here you know that here the micropyle it persists that is asking as a small pore right in the seed coat it's asking why this is because from this you know the entry of you can see water and oxygen takes place when the water and oxygen they enter the seed through this micropyle then the seed germinates so it helps in seed germination next question is integuments of an ovule harden and the water content is highly reduced as the seed matures why is it that you know as the seed matures the integuments they harden why is it if you look at an ovule i don't have much place but still i'll try to draw it over here you know that it's an ovule and these are the integuments of the ovule and the ovule is going to get converted into the seed so why is it that as the seed matures it is asking these integuments they harden and the water content is reduced approximately you know 15 percent you can see it in their ncrt why does it happen this it happens to protect the embryo and keep the seed viable you know when uh, this harden it gives protection to the embryo which is found within to the developing and as it loses the water content now it is less prone to microbial infection thus it helps to the seed to remain viable until favorable conditions they return for germination what i mean to say is you know this embryo which is found within the ovule as it gets converted into seed it loses its water content it hardened so that the embryo is protected inside it can wait for the right conditions to come back at that time it will germinate last why is apple and cashew nuts not called as true fruit you can see all these answers in page 34 of your ncrt yes i forgot to tell you one thing at the beginning of my lecture please children as you sit with me for the questions you know for this question uh, series make sure that you are having your ncrt with you if you are not having please pause my video go rush get your ncrt then only sit because in all my questions i'm basically highlighting what are the page numbers 
where you will find these answers and so in the column you know in the margin of this uh, page 34 please write this question highlight it with the yellow color so the next time when you open your ncrt you can actually see oh from this paragraph five mark question had come in 2011 in the board examination right so you know that in apple and cashew nut you know the part that we eat let me see that is actually thalamus and you know that those type of fruit where ovary is eaten that is called true fruit and those fruits where parts other than ovary is eaten that's called false fruit and since in apple and cashew nut it's given very clearly in page 34 of your ncrt that actually where the part that we consume is thalamus so thal uh, these two fruits are called as false fruits right so this is about one question that had come now i told you that the or question for this also came from this chapter right so let us look at the or question draw a label diagram of ls of an embryo of grass and label any six points i want to highlight over here is that in board examination there is no weightage on the drawing the only marks are on the labeling so with six labeling that will be three marks there is no marks on drawing but of course the drawing has to be correct if you draw the right diagram you don't get extra marks but if you don't draw the right diagram your marks will be cut right but the marks actually you get is only for the labeling so it's given six labeling so uh, let us look so this is the diagram we have been talking about uh, you can see this it is on page 35 of your ncrt and it has a lot of labeling scutellum coleoptile shoot apex ep blast radical root cap and coleuriza these are seven labeling and you have been asked to make any six labels right so half into six this will be of three marks weightage it's a total five mark question second the part b's give reason for the following anthers of angiosperms are described dithecus this answer one this you will get in in page 21 you know that because in angiosperms the anther is covered by two theca if i draw this anther like this it is covered by two theca one and two so we call it as dithecus and the other is hybrid seeds are to be produced year after year this you will get on the last page of your you know ncrt page 39 on the topic epomixis you know why is it that hybrid seeds have to be produced every year hybrid seeds you know when you know do hybridization and then a plant is produced why are the hybrid seeds you know to be produced year after year this is because you know the uh, 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 the progeny shows segregation and do not maintain the hybrid characters that means these hybrid seeds such a plant ugega once they have fertilization they will be mixing of the characters and the seeds born out of them when you sow it they will not be identical to the previous one because here the there is segregation of characters and they do not maintain the hybrid characters right i have taught all these points in the theory please refer page 39 of your ncrt now we are done we know that five mark question came from this chapter chapter 2 in uh, 2011 now let's come to 2012 in 2012 now that's a big number out of 14 questions that year instead of 14 16 questions came from this entire unit reproduction and out of 16 you can see 10 questions alone came from this chapter that means this chapter is is, is important right so let us see what are the questions that came you can see overall all the questions all put at one table over here so we will discuss one at a time why is banana considered a good example of parthenocarpy i told you to sit with your ncrt open page 37 it's given very clearly over there because here you can see the fruit is formed without fertilization and there is no formation of seed so that's the right answer right state one advantage and disadvantage of cleistogamy please refer page 28 of your ncrt i'll not re repeat you can see the page numbers here and what is the advantage you know, what is cleistogamy the, you know uh, the phenomena where the flowers they never open the flowers they never open the flowers they never bloom as a result what happens and these are always bisexual flowers uh, and these flowers may what happen whenever the male anther will burst uh, the pollens will land on the stigma and that will lead to cell pollination only but the good point is since here the, uh, it is very assured since the flower will never bloom so it is assured 100 percent that you know fertilization will take place pollination will take place seed production will take place but the disadvantage is since it is cell pollination so there will be no variation leading to inbreeding depression right so this is one question that came uh, now next uh, let us look uh, this is um, this was a one mark question the second one was a two mark uh, question now we come to the three mark question uh, 
in three mark question uh you have to explain two terms and the third term is from another chapter give the function of coleuriza now you know that the function of coleuriza what is coleuriza in monocot and uh, the root is protected by a membrane a sheath and this sheath is called as coleuriza so it the radical it protects the radical of the monocot embryo and what is the germ pore you know that in pollen grains that area where the exon is missing in this unthickened area this unthickened area is called as germ pore so what is the function of germ pore you already know it very well it helps in germination of pollen grain there is a little spelling mistake here it will be germination of pollen grain that is it helps in formation of pollen tubes pollen tubes will be formed over here right so now let us come to the five mark question that came from this chapter why is fertilization in angiosperm referred to as double fertilization and again you had to draw a diagram of an endospermous monocot seed right so let us see how it goes this is a five mark question now you can see uh fertilization in angiosperm refer to as double fertilization now before uh, you know i bring that here you know that in angiosperms i'll just make a very small diagram here i'll just make a uh, you know like this you and this is your embryo sac i'm making not the ovule but the embryo sac you know uh, this is the egg and this is the central cell and these are the polar nuclei when the two male gamete comes one of the male gamete fuses with the egg and the process is called syngamy and the other fuses with the two polar nuclei take and this process is called as triple fusion and since here two fertilizations are taking place simultaneously we call it as double fertilization so let us see what's given here yes you can see the haploid cell is egg is fertilized by one male gamete to form zygote and the process is called syngamy and two polar nuclei is fused by the second male gamete to form a triploid primary endospermic nucleus and the process is called as triple fusion right so uh, this is why we call it as double fertilization please refer in crt page 34 for that secondly there was a question draw a neat label diagram of ls of endospermous monocot seed endospermic only monocot seed they are saying so in your ncrt in page 37 you have two monocot seeds one that of maize in your ncrt it's not label but i'll tell you this seed is that of onion right so you have to draw a label diagram of any one of the two right uh, and uh, i told you since this is uh, the um, uh, a half into 3 this will come as 1 and a half this will come as 1 and a half so this was of 3 marks right so obviously this diagram is of 2 marks i told you there's no uh, uh, never any marks on uh, diagram it's only on labeling so if it is of 2 marks it will be half into 4 that will be 2 marks so you have to label minimum 4 you know labels you can choose any four out of any of these two diagrams right so any four labels see it is also given in the marking scheme including endosperm it saying since they have asked you to draw the diagram of an endospermic seed so one of the labeling must be that of endosperm so they are saying that this labeling is mandatory out of the four labels right this over here and this over here these two labelings are are mandatory because they have asked a endospermic seed so endosperm must be shown now let us come to 2013 In two thousand and thirteen, we have again had ten mark question from this chapter out of fourteen. Can you see how important this chapter is? Now that again comes out as a very huge marks, right? One two mark question had come, one three mark and one five mark. Five plus three eight plus two ten. So let us proceed one by one. So this is the two mark question that had come. In angiosperm, zygote is deployed. while primary endospermic cell is triploid explain right why does it happen so that's the answer that they have given you know that in uh, angiosperms there is double fertilization which we studied just now so if this we consider as ovary and this we consider as ovule and this we consider as the embryo sac this is the egg this is the two central you know polar nuclei you know that 
zygote is diploid because the egg is haploid it fuses with a haploid male gamete so obviously the ploidy comes out to be diploid because here there is fin fusion or syngamy of male gamete with female gamete right but endospermic cell you know that this central cell after fertilization this central cell it gets as uh, converted to form primary endospermic cell right now here what happens you already have two polar nuclei so this is n plus n and one male gamete fuses again so this comes to 3n right so since two polar nuclei and male gamete fuse since here three gametes are you know three um not gametes but three nuclei getting fused so we call it as uh, triploid right so this was the two mark question now let us come to the three mark question describe the endosperm development in a coconut it's asking about in detail please refer page 35 of your ncrt there the steps are given and you are going to write exactly these steps because this is the exact answer that has been released by the cbse there it says you know uh, how is endosperm form in a coconut you know that in coconut the coconut water is a free nuclear endosperm you know that and the coconut kernel right the white part that is the coconut kernel that is uh, the cellular endosperm so what happens is the primary uh, here i'll just show it here it is saying Uh, the primary endospermic nuclei undergoes successive nuclear divisions. पहले इस इसके सिर्फ nucleus divide करेंगे successive nuclear division to form a number of free nuclei. ठीक later the cell wall formation takes place. Later the cell wall formation will take place like this, and there are a lot of free nuclei uh, left in the center as well. ठीक the cell wall occurs at the periphery. This one. this is the cellular endosperm about which i was talking you cellular endosperm which is the coconut kernel right and jo beech mein free nuclear reh gaya they is it is free nuclear endosperm and which includes the coconut water the central part that's what saying then the cell wall first the nuclei will divide then the cell wall occurs only towards the periphery right and endosperm becomes cellular bahar wala and beech mein kya reh jata hai your free nuclear endosperm is left in the central part next question is how are peep uh, seeds different from castor seeds with respect to endosperm i have taught you not once but again and again and again that the entire fabaceae family the seeds are non endospermic while in castor the seeds are endospermic so this is how the seed of pea differs from that of castor now let us come to the five mark question from this chapter for 2012 draw an ls of a crystal a uh, showing pollen tube entering the embryo sac in an angiosperm and label any six parts other than it's saying you cannot label stigma style and ovary inko chhod kar you have to label six parts i told you there's no marks on the diagram it's six parts that means three marks ka ye diagram hai so let us look at this so what are the six parts you could have done other than stigma style and ovary right this is one pollen grain uh pollen tube these are the labelings which they have shown antipodal embryo sac polar nuclei excellent synergy i must emphasize this labeling and this labeling this embryo sac this is not in your original diagram which is in your ncrt these two were added by cbsc only in this answer that is in the marking scheme right so please add these labelings in your ncrt diagram in case you know you come to get some questions like this where you have to make labeling outside ncrt you know what what are the preferred labelings by cbsc right write the changes a fertilized ovule undergoes within the ovary once you know uh, fertilization has taken place uh, ovary ke andar what are the changes this ovule undergoes this ovule undergoes after fertilization you know and within the ovary ठीक इन एन एंजियोस्पर्मिक प्लान सो वेरी इन वेल नो इट दिस इज ऑफ टू मार्क्स सो विद इन दिस ओवल वॉट विल हैपन द जाइगोट विल फॉर्म इम्ब्रियो इट्स जस्ट टेलिंग वॉट आर द चेंजेस दिस ओवल विल अंडर गो लेट वी ड्रॉ द ओवल लिटल क्लियरली हियर लेट मी ड्रॉ इट लिटल क्लियरली ओवर हियर वॉट आर द चेंजेस इट्स इट्स आस्किंग राइट वॉट आर द चेंजेस इट्स आस्किंग वन इट इज सेंग दैट द जाइगोट विल फॉर्म द इम्ब्रियो सेकेंड इट्स सेंग the integuments this is the first change it is speaking second the integuments they will harden to form the seed coat right this micropyle will remain in the final seed theek 
and this synergid and these antipodal cells and synergid they will degenerate right so this is the third point and this ovule itself will get converted into seed so this is the fifth point this is your fourth point out of these four you had to write any four right so please make a note of what are the changes that has been described now let us come to 2014 in 2014 again see nine mark question out of 14 you can very well see what is the weightage of this chapter I'm really uh, again and again surprised to see that out of 14 marks that is for the entire unit 9 or 10 marks come from this chapter alone and as you can see uh, before we proceed there's one one mark question one three mark question and the option has come from this chapter only and one option in five mark question has come from this chapter right so one mark three mark three mark optional and five mark let us go ahead so this is the one mark question name the parts of the flower uh, uh, name the parts of the flower which the tassels of corn cob represent. Now this you can see it in your NCRT page uh, 29 as I'm always seeing. Uh, seeing in uh, corn cob that means uh, this is the corn makkai makkai mein ye jo tassels hai ye jo tassels nikalte makkai mein aise bhi jo ghar pe makkai laate hai usme jo ye aise baal jaisa nikalta tassels what do they represent? Take in your NCRT it is very clearly written Name the parts of the flower which the tassel, this represents basically the style and the stigma, right? It's given very clearly in your NCRT in page 29, right? So, uh, this is it. Now, next come. Uh, this is of three marks, weightage. Name a list of three outbreeding devices that flowering plants have developed and explain how they encourage cross-pollination. You know that outbreeding devices means those devices which help in cross-pollination, right so you have to go to ncrt page 31 right there you can, will find a lot of points there are four points over there in your ncrt and you have to write any three of them uh, what are the outbreeding devices that is the time of pollen release and sigma receptivity are not synchronized anther and stigma are placed at different position self incompatibility or production of unisexual flowers or dioecious plants Ticket, all these points will assure cross-pollination. Just go through these. There are four points out of four. Any three were asked, right? The option of the three mark question ka option also came from this uh, chapter only. Why are angiosperm anthers called the dithecus? You can see it is a repeat question because here it is covered by two theca. I told you earlier also. Describe the structure of microsporangium, right? You just had to describe it. You didn't have to draw it. So, it, anther is bilobe. So, uh, you know, um, that is, it has two theca. So, we call it as dithecus, half plus half. And then you had to describe the structure of microsporangium. So, you know that in microsporangium, the outermost layer is epidermis. Then you find the endothesium. Then you find the middle layer, right? And then you find the tapetum. You can see it in page 21 of your NCRT, right? Describe the structure. And then you had to write in a young anther, uh, a group of, uh, then in the center, you found a group of homogeneous cells called the sporogenous tissue, right? Which produces microspore or the pollen grain. So half mark was for, you know, this point, bilobed half was for two theca, one mark for this explaining all the four layers and one mark was for the sporogenous cells which are found at the center right now let us come to the five mark question that is asked from this chapter that was asked explain the different ways of epomictic seeds can develop please refer page 39 of your ncrt to see so uh, there are two methods that are described in your ncrt first the diploid cells can be formed without reduction division the example is asteraceae and grass Half mark was on description, half mark on example. In citrus fruits and the diploid nucellus cells, they develop into embryo. So half mark on that, the examples, mango and citrus fruit and half mark on the nucellus cells. So this is one mark. Take, and then, uh, so this was totally um, uh, uh, two ways, epomictic seeds that was given an example of each, one example was required in each one of them so this is of two marks we have done now let us now come to the next mention one advantage of epomictic seed epomictic seed may there's no segregation so economically it is uh, it is good because they can get the same type of plant uh, year after year with the help of seeds so this is again uh, you will go to uh, uh, this page only 
This is from page 39. And then draw a label diagram of dicotyledonous embryo. So this was the diagram. This is of, you know, one advantage. This was of one mark, two plus one, three. So obviously it is of two marks. Two marks, that means four labeling. There you can find one, two, three. There are five labeling in your NCRT. Page 35, you can refer. You had to draw any four of them. So that was of two marks weightage. So please do practice this diagram wisely and well. Right now, let us come to page two. Uh, sorry, year 2015. In 2015, again, eight mark question out of uh, that tier 15 mark questions were asked from this chapter from this unit. It should have been 14, but there was a little bit missed. Uh, okay, at times it does happen with CBSC, and eight marks were asked from this chapter itself. And uh, what were the questions that were asked? One three mark question and one five mark question. Five plus three, it was eight. So, let us come to the three mark question first. State what is epomixis, comment on its significance, how it can be commercially used. See again page 39, epomixis, again it has come, last year also it had come and again it has come, we are seeing that epomixis has come for the third time, right? So that means epomixis page 39, very, very, very important, right? So what is epomixis? Formation of, it is a type of asexual reproduction where seeds are formed without fertilization. What is its significance? Here, the parental characters are maintained so that the offsprings may, there's no segregation of characters. That means with the help of epomictic seeds, you can make identical plants, right? And how can it be commercially used? This is one mark. You know, if uh, hybrid seeds are made epomictic, the farmer, there may be some spelling mistakes here. The farmer can keep using his own seeds year after year. He may not buy it and that will save him a lot of money. Right. So please, you all pause on all the slides, go into the NCRT page, write the question, you know, underline it, learn it well. But I have to move a little fast, otherwise the video will get a little big. Now, the five mark question that was asked from this chapter was, you can see there was a five mark question. Plan an experiment and prepare a flow chart of the steps that you would follow to ensure that the seeds are formed only from the desired set of pollen grains. Now, what will be the that type of method whereby the seeds will be produced only from the desired set of pollen grains? Except, of course, you guessed it right. This is a this is it's actually asking about artificial hybridization. It's asking about artificial hybridization. Right. So plan an experiment to prepare a flow chart. You had to give a flow chart uh, uh, of how to do artificial hybridization and write the importance of such experiments. Right. So let us see what was there in the marking scheme. What was the answer there in the marking scheme? So first plan an experiment. What you had to do, you had to select the flower. Please refer page 33 of your NCRT and, you know, mark it there. One, two, three, four point. Then you had to do emasculation. First, you had to select the plant, you had to remove the male part, TK, and get it converted into unisexual female flower, TK. This is called as emasculation. Then you had to dust it with the desired pollen grains. Then you, uh, sorry, first you had to bag it. You had to bag it, right? And after bagging at the right time, you had to remove the bag put the dark pollen grains and again re-bag till the fruits are formed. Six points, half into six, that will come to three marks. What is this process called? They asked you, it's called as hybridization, artificial, that's one mark. And what is the significance of such experiment? You get superior or improved variety of plants, that one mark. So that comes to five mark question from this chapter, right? So now let us move to 2016. In 2016, a three mark question came from this chapter and five mark ka optional question. One of the optional questions from five mark, it came from this chapter. So, literal, uh, so you can say on an approximation, eight mark questions they actually came from this chapter. So, let us first move on to the three mark question. You can see it is uh, one, one, one. There are three uh, parts to it, right? Name the organic material of exino of, uh, 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 that the exine of pollen grain is made up of you know it very well that the exine of pollen grain it is made up of a chemical called as poropollenine you know it very well right so this you guessed it right how is this material advantageous to the pollen grains let us see the material is called sporopollenine. It's given in your NCRT, page 23. Very clearly, it is resistant to high temperatures, strong acid, alkali, and no enzyme can even degrade it. 
right so the b part was still it is observed that it does not form a continuous layer around the pollen grain if it's so good why it is not continuous why is it left at certain places give reason this part is called as germ poor and this is left here so that the pollen tube can emerge out that is pollen germination can take place how are pollen banks useful Take for pollen banks, you have to go to page 24. In pollen banks, they help in storing. You know that the way they are seed banks, they are pollen grain banks. They help in storing pollen grains for crop breeding uh, program, right? Now, the optional question uh, also came from this chapter. Let me see. This was, yes, five mark or oh, no. This was three mark question. Oh, the three mark optional question came. Sorry, this was three mark question. Now, let us move to the five mark question that came from this chapter. A senior biology student, as a, you have been asked to demonstrate uh, to the students of secondary level of your school, the procedures that will ensure cross-pollination in a hermaphrodite flower. You have a hermaphrodite flower. The flower is, uh, you know, bisexual. And you have to demonstrate what uh, is the procedure uh, to ensure that cross pollination occurs despite the flower being cross uh, you know bisexual that it should fertilize this so uh, list the different steps and provide reason for each one of them again this is the answer is artificial hybridization from artificial hybridization you can ensure that yes from a bisexual flower also you can ensure class pollination right so you had to list the different steps and provide reason so first step is emasculation you had to give the reason you remove the anther here so that you know uh, to avoid cell pollination if i don't remove the anther what can happen cell pollination can occur my next step here is bagging and i will give a reason to that why do i bag it after that i do the bag so that i can prevent contamination from unwanted pollen grains and third i do is rebagging so once i you know i have removed the bag and you know pollinated this flower once i remove the bag and pollinate this flower i rebag it so that you know uh, 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 i can form the fruit and again i can prevent contamination from any uh, uh, unnecessary pollen grains so this was three mark question and two mark question was draw the diagram of megasporangium of an angiosperm you know what is megasporangium megasporangium is actually another word for ovule so you had to draw an ovule and they have given that you have to label funicle micropyle embryo sac and nucellus over here right so this is the funicle this is the micropyle this is the nucellus this is the embryo sac this is half into four that will come to two marks so this was an important two mark question so five marks came from this now let us come to 2017 in 2017 now let us look uh, from this chapter again 10 marks oh my god there's uh, out of you know it's really surprising that out of 14 marks um, if you get 10 marks repeatedly from one chapter you can really very well understand how important the chapter must be so we have one two mark question one three mark question and one five mark question so first let us come to the two mark question a pollen grain in an angiosperm at the time of dehiscence from a, an anther could be two cell or three cell yes we know that how are the cells placed within the pollen explain first you have to explain that the pollen grain can either be two cell you know that two cell means a larger vegetative cell and a smaller generative cell right you know that in um, uh, 60 percent of the angiosperm more than 60 percent of angiosperm the pollen is released in two cell condition in uh, uh, you know uh, less than 60 percent that is approximately 40 percent what happens this generative cell again divides and it forms two male gametes so this is the vegetative cell and these are the two male gametes right uh, two male gametes and this is called as a three cell condition so uh, uh, it can so you have to explain this and then you have to explain how the cells are placed within the pollen grain when shed at two cells. So when it is shed at two cells, how are these two cells placed? So let us look at the answer. In two cell condition, you can see the pollen grains contains a generative cell. This is the generative cell and a vegetative cell. Please refer page 23 of your NCRT. Whereas in three cell condition, you have one vegetative cell and two male gametes. Now here, how is this placed? You know that the generative cell is spindle shaped and it floats in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell. It's clear-cut reverse drill. The generative cell is like this, spindle shape. This is the generative cell, and it floats in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell, right? Now, let us come to, uh, we have done a two-mark question. Now, we'll come to the three-mark question. 
can a plant flowering in mumbai be pollinated by pollen grains of the same species in new delhi it's asking that suppose if i have a one plant of one species say a rose plant in mumbai right can its pollen grains be pollinated by a plant of the same species that means a rose plant in delhi can pollination take place in so distant places can one um, no pollen grains of one species of plant pollinate the uh, another flower of the same species but one in from mumbai to delhi that's what's asking and if you think yes you had to give an explanation of the same right so yes the answer is yes and that can be done by artificial means you know that artificial hybridization i can carry the flower and then pollinate it so yes it can happen the next question was draw a diagram of pistil where pollination has successfully occurred that means again we'll go to page 32 ncrt and this diagram label the parts involved in reaching the male gamete to its desired destination those parts which help the male gamete reach the embryo sac only those parts you had to label so you know the stigma it really helps because it helps in landing of the pollen grain then this pollen tube because the male gamete travels through this pollen tube so second labeling was pollen tube third is synergid because through one of the synergid actually the pollen tube enters and also through the micropyle it enters and it crosses the filiform apparatus so you had to label any four out of these five parts is that clear so this is about uh, five mark question and uh, now uh, let us come to i think uh, what is it uh, this is a two mark question oh so sorry this was a three mark question not five mark question now let us come to the five mark question asked from this chapter when a seed of orange is squeezed many embryos instead of one are observed explain how it is possible again apomixis page 39 you can see how frequently this has been asked right this is a case of polyembryony and how does it happen you know that in orange it is the surrounding new cellular cells right if this is the ovule i'm just making like this this uh, is the integument and this is the ovule you know the surrounding new cellular cells they protrude inside you know that into the embryo sac and they develop into more than one embryos since more than one new cellular cells it enters each one can develop into an embryo so this is called as polyembryony are these embryos genetically similar or different these are genetically similar why because they have been formed not from fertilization but from the new cellular cells so of course these are similar as they are produced by mitotic division it will be division look at the dison form without fertilization right so obviously these embryos are going to be identical so now we will come to 2018 in 2018 five mark question only came from this chapter and now let us look at it the five mark question is describe any two devices in flowering plants which prevent autogamy and gynogamy you have to tell to what is autogamy now you know that autogamy means when the flower is you know bisexual and it pollinates from the anther to the stigma of the same flower same plant it is same flower and same plant right now what is gynogamy you know it well it is between two different flowers the flowers are unisexual this is male this is female the flowers are unisexual take it is between two different flowers the different flowers but same plant the flowers are different but the plant is same that's called gynogamy uh same so what's it saying is how will you prevent both of them i don't want autogamy i don't want gynogamy again what it is asking is outbreeding devices outbreeding devices right so the, you again saw that outbreeding devices has been repeated for the third time outbreeding i don't know why the pen is not cooperating devices oh it's not writing horribly i need to check it right so here uh it has got a little smudgy uh you have to see here one production of unisexual flowers and self incompatibility you had to write any two devices they have given two over here explain the event up to double fertilization after pollen tube enter once the pollen tube enters it releases two male gametes in the cytoplasm of the synergid one of them fuses with the egg that's called syngamy it forms zygote the other one fuses with the polar nuclei it's called triple fusion and it forms primary endospermic nucleus or the primary endospermic cell right so this is how you had to write 
uh, it's giving you a one into three. You have uh, uh, this was of two mark question, two points, and this was one and a half and one and a half. So this was of three marks. Okay, so this was five marks. Now let us come to two thousand nineteen. Oh my God, again, 10 marks question, one, two mark, one, three mark, one, five mark. Let's look at it. The two mark question, state the importance of emasculation and bagging in carrying out artificial hybridization. Again, it's a repeat question. That means it's very, very important, right? Only emasculation and bagging you had to explain. It has already come. Emasculation, it prevents cell pollination and bagging prevents contamination of stigma from unwanted pollen grains. Since we have done it, I'm not going to take it much time. Now let us come to the three mark question. Uh, draw TS of a young anther of an angiosperm and label the different layers of the wall only and write their function, right? So this is how a young anther looks. You had to label all the walls, that is epidermis, endothesium, middle layer, and tapetum. I told you there's no marks on diagram, on labeling, so four labeling, that means two marks, and you had to give function of each. Epidermis, endothesium, middle layer, they are protective and they help in dehiscence, right? And tapetum, it helps in nourishment. It is protection and dehiscence. It's given in your NCRT. So total, it was of three marks. Now let us come to the five mark question that was asked from this chapter. Where is microsporangium located in angiosperms? Microsporangium is located in anther lobes. You know that. Take within the anther lobe, this is your microsporangium. State the function of tapetum. You know that tapetum, we just did it, it nourishes the developing pollen grains, right? And state the function of the other three layers of, we just did it, epidermis, endothesium, middle layer, its function is protection and dehiscence, right? Then describe the structure of male gametophyte. You know that male gametophyte is another name for pollen grain. So they have asked you to, uh, you know, describe the structure of pollen grains. So let us see how it is. So uh, in your NCRT, there are only uh, one or two, two labelings, but they have done it here four. And uh, you know, they have, it's given male gametophyte uh, produce, draw a structure and label it. In your NCRT, there are only two labels, but in the marking scheme, they made four labels, exine, in time, vegetative cell and generative cell. And each was given half mark. So that comes to two mark question, right? And then what is the function of each part of the male gametophyte. So exine and entine is protection, vegetative cell. You know that it is the reserve food material and it helps in formation of pollen tube and generative cell will form the two male gametes, right? So this is one and a half marks. This is two marks, two, three and a half, and this is one and a half. So that will come to five mark questions, right? Finally, 2020. This year, I must tell you, a lot of sets of question papers were made across different states. In different sets, uh, states, you know, different question papers were made. I have just discussed question from one of those sets. Uh, you eight mark question, again, it's a very healthy sign. And first, we will have a three mark question and then a five mark question ko or. So the three mark question is explain double fertilization in angiosperm. It was a three mark question, right? So uh, in three, oh, sorry. Uh, these two points should not have been given. Uh, uh, I have by mistake made it um, a five mark question. I'm sorry. After entering one of the, it releases two male gametes. I'm sorry, this will not have any marks. One of the male gamete moves towards the eggs and fuses and it does syngamy, forms zygote. This will be one mark. The other male gamete moves with the, you know, to the two polar nuclei, fuses with it to form endospermic nucleus. This is called as triple fusion. This will be of one mark. Since here there are two fusions, syngamy and triple fusion. So we call it as triple uh, double fertilization, three mark. Tick. This point you need not write. Sorry. This you need not write. So this is the three mark question from this chapter. Now let us come to the five mark question that was from this chapter. The five mark question is where does microsporogenesis occur in angiosperms? Right, we just now did it. Microspora, uh, it occurs within the anther lobe, in the, in the microsporangium. I just now taught you. Just now we did it. The anther has microsporangia, and within this microsporangium, the microsporogenesis takes place. Describe the process of microsporogenesis. You know that what happens? These sporogenous cells they undergo meiosis to form four microspores. T it forms a microspore tetrad. So that's what is saying the sporogenous cell. It acts as potential microspore mother cell. It will undergo meiosis and forms a tetrad 
okay four uh, cells and uh, it will undergo meiosis so this is called as microsporogenesis and then draw a label diagram of two cell this process is called micro then uh, male gametophyte now what is male gametophyte you know that is pollen grain pollen grain ka aapko diagram banana hai question is ba aaya draw a label diagram of two cell male gametophyte and how is the three cell different from it so you have to draw this diagram in your ncrt you have only two vegetative and generative we are still to see the marking scheme they may ask you know give two more labeling one is exine and one is entine as i showed you earlier and you had to uh, give the difference between two cell and three cell condition the two cell condition consists of two cells larger vegetative and smaller generative while in three cell condition you know this uh, generative cell it forms two male gametes right it has two male gametes this cell condition is found in up over 60% of the angiosperm while this one is found in below 40% so if it is more than 60% so this should be more less than 40% of the angiosperms right with that uh i just thank you for being so patient and with that we have completed the 10 years question papers from uh, second chapter uh re uh, sexual reproduction in flowering plants and once again i would like to uh, you know reemphasize on this fact that this chapter is very 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 important from both point of view it's actually very important from medical point of view as well please check out on my video on 10 years you know question uh, you know questions or uh, mcq questions that is medical questions from this chapter i'm going to make a video uh, on that also and i'm going to release that as well so please check out 10 years medical question papers from the uh, questions from this chapter and you'll realize that in medical too a lot of questions are asked from this chapter that means this chapter is very very important for both board exams as well as your medical exams and some of the questions that come repeatedly you have uh, just identified it one is about epomixis highly repeated then one question we saw that about you know exine in time being uh, quite well repeated then when one we found uh, you know from pollen grain yes then microsporogenesis etc it ha we have been seeing that question then you know drawing some of the drawings you saw uh, they are quite important so we just make a note of those questions which have been asked repeatedly and have they are double fertilization it has been asked again and again out breeding devices asked again and again artificial hybridization being asked again and again please practice these questions very well and study ncrt very well um, uh, uh, all the uh, topics and uh, you know before i conclude i'll just say you are one of those lucky people who have started you know going through the question papers right now normally one mistake that children do is just before the examination you know just before uh, the onset of the final examination if the final board exam is in the month of february they start practicing the question papers in the month of january that is too late if you practice it chapter wise you actually come to know what is important from the chapter and how to write answers it's no point knowing what is important before the exam when you have already studied so long for one year so i just congratulate all you for you for joining me on uh, you know solving the question papers so early so please uh, go through them uh, slowly write those questions on the margin underline it you know with the highlighter pen so that when each time you open ncrt those questions they flash in front of you and you can be reminded of all the important questions that have been asked over the years right and as i normally do at the end i am going to do it once again i am going to just make a small uh, request thanks for watching my video and please do if you like this entire content the way i delivered it and was if it was useful please like this video please put your comments below if you have any more doubts if there's some question you could not understand or anything else you want to discuss with me and please uh, do subscribe if you are new to my channel and press the bell, bell notification so that each time i put up a new video you come to know about it till then uh, as i always say study hard and keep well thank you